So I did this DIY renter friendly board and bat and wall and once it was done, I knew that it was time to give this space a refresh. Hi, I'm Allie and welcome to my channel. Today you're coming along with me as we give my dining space a makeover and I'll share a few budget saving tips. That's because this video is part of a collaboration with my friend Eunice over at Eunice at Home and we challenged each other to make over our dining spaces with a $150 budget. So at the end of this video, I highly recommend you visit the description box and check out Eunice's video so you can see how she gave her dining space a refresh and she has a different style than mine so you'll get even more dining space ideas. And I absolutely know that you're going to love it and you're going to love her and her channel. Now I originally gave my dining space a makeover about a year ago. So here's what it originally looked like. While it was cute at the time, I've come to realize that it's really not my style. Throughout the past year, I've been really working to discover what my decor and interior design style are, and they most definitely fall into the transitional style. So that is exactly what I wanted to channel into this space. Now, since this is a refresh and not a total makeover, and we're working with a budget here, I do want to keep a couple original things in the space. Those are the window treatments, the rug, the table, this cabinet, and my sunburst mirror. That's because this sunburst mirror is still one of my favorite DIYs I have ever made. All right, we have a lot to tackle in this space, so let's get started. Now this refresh is happening because I decided to do this board and batten wall that is completely renter friendly and between you and me I am not including it in the total cost of this video because well it's a separate video and I had the idea to do the board and batten wall way before I was challenged to do this room refresh. I made a full video on the process of how I installed this wall. It is completely removable when it's time to move out and it is definitely a must watch if you are a renter looking for a fun accent wall for your own apartment. Now this board and batten wall definitely is what's shaping the design for this space, so I'm gonna share my mood board with you here. There's definitely some elements that I am keeping in the space that are original and those are staying because we're trying to keep this as budget friendly as possible. But when I saw these inspiration photos, I knew that this was the kind of vibe and feeling that I wanted to channel into my own space. So to achieve that, I wanted to bring in some beautiful artwork that goes up on the wall that really changes up the vibe that I had previously. And also some really just gorgeous accents. I love a touch of brass that has been my latest obsession, along with some beautiful pottery and other eye-catching elements. So now to achieve this sort of full transformation that I'm planning on on a $150 budget, the best way to do this is with some DIYs. And so the first one that we're tackling is a really cute spindle leg plant stand. <laughs> So I'm starting with a 15 inch wood round project panel for the tabletop. I found the middle of the circle and then I used my speed square to mark at a 120 degree angle around the entire circle. Of course, you could definitely use a protractor for this. And that's how I found the placement for my leg plates. Now these are nine degree angle leg plates. I got them off Amazon, they'll be linked below. And I used my drill to make pilot holes and then used my driver to screw in the screws. And as you see, I'm only doing three legs on this table versus four. Now to make the legs, I'm gonna be using three stair balusters or you know, stair spindles to give that leg silhouette that I am really going for for this project. And I used my hand miter saw to cut off the bottom block of the baluster so I'd have the end of the leg. And then I kept about two inches from the top block on the baluster. That would be used for the legs to rest under the tabletop and give them a little extra length. Next, I used some tape on my drill bit to mark how far into the legs to drill a hole for the bolt. And at this point, this is where my DIY went a little wrong. I didn't have the right tools for installing these little screw things. I don't know what they're called. And it just ended up kind of sloppy. I would definitely love to recreate this DIY in a future video where I know the proper tools and the proper way to do this. So if you have any tips on how I can install those little screw bolt things, uh, let me know in the comments. 
I screwed the legs in and then gave the table two coats of stain in weathered oak. And since I plan to redo this project completely, instead of going through the whole process of adding a polyurethane coat, I skipped it for this because I definitely want to go back and re-tackle this project later on. And now the reason I decided to DIY instead of buy for this project is because I could not find a spindle leg table for under $50 and instead I was able to DIY this table for under $37. The next DIY project I decided to take on was transforming my current dining chairs. I have been obsessed with that black dining chair look. I just think it looks so classy. And since I have zero attachment to these chairs, they were free and a hand-me-down to begin with, I thought, you know, why not take a little risk and paint the chairs? Now I gave them a good sand and a good wipe down prior to starting and the color I chose was Peppercorn by Valspar because it was more of a charcoal gray color than a true black which because this space is so light and airy I thought a charcoal gray color would fit the space a little bit better. Now I went with a paint sample to save money for this project and I don't recommend it because the paint took forever to dry. Like literally forever. So if you're going to be painting furniture, definitely spend a little bit more money to get a quart of higher quality paint because you'll have a much better experience, but the finished result on these chairs still turned out pretty great. With the paint on the chairs drying, it was time to call it a wrap for day one. On day two, the first thing that I wanted to address is this ugly flush mount light fixture that is in my apartment. So I decided to do the basket lampshade hack. Now I filmed this whole process, then accidentally deleted the footage. So here is an Instagram reel that I filmed that shows you what I did. Basically, I just cut a hole in the bottom of the basket. And then all I had to do was pop it up around the existing light fixture without any sort of attachments because of the style of my light that's on my ceiling. And with a flick of the switch, I turned it on and boy, Boy, did it look so much better than that original ugly light fixture. Next up, I wanted to try another hack that I had seen on Instagram, which is doing something about the curtains that you see behind me here. I have been using curtain clips to attach them to the curtain rod, and they looked a little slouchy. I think they fit that boho vibe that I originally brought into the space. So I saw this hack where you use curtain pins, you put them on the back of the curtains where you can't really see them, and then you bring back in your curtain clip and clip the clip to the pin and the fabric a little bit on the back there like so and then hang them back up. It makes your curtains a little less slouchy looking. I don't think the difference is huge. I think that's just because of the material of the curtains that I have, but there is a noticeable difference between the before and after. So very subtle, but I think this was a worthwhile hack that I might be trying again in the future. Next up, let's address wall art because that old original painting, it just had to go. I was I was sick of looking at it and I really, really wanted to bring in a much different feeling into the space and wall art is a huge way to do that. Now, since this is a budget challenge video, I thought I would draw and paint my own art, but due to time restrictions, I really just couldn't fit that in. But then I discovered Etsy has a million shops where you can download art for very inexpensive and then just have it printed out yourself. So I picked out a couple of pieces, got them printed out at Staples, and I am just in love with them. These are the pieces I picked, this set of three Magnolia drawings. I just love them. They were even on my mood board, which was so exciting when I found them on Etsy. And I also printed out two different paintings that I thought would be a nice accent in the space as well. I'll be sure to link the Etsy shops that I purchased these pieces from in my description box. Now for across the wall with the board and batten, I wanted three matching frames with those magnolia prints. And I originally picked up two of these frames, which were part of a buy one, get two free sale at Michael's. And I was gonna keep that original ladder shelf in my room, but decided that that's not gonna stay anymore. So I had to pick up another frame from Michael's so that it would match the whole set. And I got it on sale for $9.99. So three frames for $9.99. Not too bad. <laughs> and I began attaching them across my board and batten wall, making sure to center up one in the middle and then evenly spacing out the other two on either side. 
So all I simply did was take each of the prints and I placed them into the frames. I used a little tape to hold the art in place so that it wouldn't fall within the frame. And I just love this look. Oh, it turned out so good. I can't wait to show you in the final reveal. And if you haven't already yet, I would so appreciate if you'd give this video a like. It seriously is the best way to help my channel grow and reach other people. Okay, let's get back to the video. Now for the remaining two art pieces, I decided to go a little bit more budget friendly and thrift two frames. So I got one for $2.99 and the other for 99 cents. And I was able to put the art inside of them. And then for these, because they didn't have any hanging hardware on the back, I just used some picture hanging command strips and those did the job perfectly. Now the next issue in the space that I wanted to address is that it's the only room in my apartment that gets a really good amount of natural sunlight, but I no longer am going to put that ladder shelf in the room because I just don't think it fits the vibe anymore. So I wanted to install my own shelves. So I had some scrap boards already in my stash. I used some veneer trim to hide that rough edge from making the cuts and this looked really, really good. And I decided to paint the shelves in the exact same color as my board and batten wall, which is white gallery by Valspar. Once two coats of the paint had dried, I then attached shelf brackets that I purchased off of Amazon. And then I figured out where the shelves would go on the wall. And this is actually a pretty decent hack to cover up that ugly phone jack that's on the wall because it's like painted on there and I can't get it off because I definitely have tried. It is stuck. It's, it's just there permanently. <laughs> To hang the shelves, I'm using the combination of hollow wall anchors for the top hole and then the regular anchors that came with the shelf brackets that I got off of Amazon for the bottom hole. screwed the shelves into the wall, it's time to style the space. I wanted to save as much money as I could out of my budget for the styling part, so I decided to use some of my DIYs that I've made here on my channel, along with a couple thrifted items. This is just a really great way to use things I already had on hand or purchase a couple inexpensive things secondhand to really elevate and make this space look amazing. I loved including this little vase right here because it was actually inspired by Eunice, who I'm collaborating with today. It just felt like a great little touch to include in the space. I put my painted chairs back in the room and I am in love with it. It just looks so much better than the original chairs I had here. And I placed my DIY plant stand table with my plant in the corner right here. And I just love the little moment that this table creates with the artwork above it. I also added this thrifted vase on my table, which was also was a fun thrift flip DIY that I will be sharing in a future video so you can see the full process. And I styled the base using some faux greenery that I already had so I could save more money in my budget. And I ended up swapping out the faux eucalyptus that you see here because it really just wasn't looking that good for a different arrangement, which you will see in the reveal. Over my craft cabinet, I put the vase and greenery that's been here since my first makeover in this space, mostly because I just love the look of it. It just still fits in with the current style that I'm going for. I also added some books and this really just gorgeous thrifted patina brass vessel. And then next to the stack of books, I styled these two DIY taper candle holders. And now it is time for the final reveal, but before I show you my space, we have to talk about Eunice and the transformation that she did in her dining room. Once you're done here, hop over to Eunice's channel and check out her video. I know you're going to love it. And with that, it is time to show you my reveal of my dining room refresh in three, two, one.
probably wondering is how I did on that $150 budget. Well, I spent a total of $133.75. So I came out under budget with $16.25 to spare. So I think I can call this dining room refresh under $150 a success. If you wanna see even more room makeovers, I have those up on the screen right here. And thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.